Hey guys, it's Graham. What's cracking? Let's talk about the Declaration of Independence. There were 56 people who signed this document in the year 1776, coming up on 246 years ago. And chances are, you don't know most of them. You might not even know more than two or three of them. You could be forgiven for thinking that George Washington was a signatory to the Declaration, but no, that summer he was out busting heads as the United States, or what would become the United States, was trying to separate from its parent nation, Great Britain. But just as there was a military side to the Revolutionary War, there was also a legal side. And in the same spirit as my Mayflower Passengers video, but with slightly better production values, I want to share with you some interesting facts about the men who brought this legal battle to the forefront. Now, most of the information that I'm going to be using comes from this book here about the lives of the signers of the Declaration of Independence. This was a book that my wife got in college. She never read it. It just ended up sitting on our shelf in our library, and I decided to leaf through it one day, and I thought it was pretty fascinating. So let me break down some of these facts for you and share them here in an easy-to-digest video. Now, as a heads up, this book was published originally in 1848, and this nifty little glossy paperback is a reprinting of that original. A lot of the information in it has been disputed or corrected in the intervening 175 years, so if some of it is out of date or there are new sources on it, by all means, share it in the comments below. So, factlet number one, there were 56 signatories to the Declaration of Independence from the 13 colonies, which would later become the first 13 states of the nation. There were New York, New Jersey, New Hampshire, Delaware, Connecticut, Massachusetts, Pennsylvania, Virginia, both Carolinas, Rhode Island, Maryland, and Georgia. Now I've got written in here in blue the amount of signatories from every state. The most, by a long shot, was Pennsylvania, while uh, Georgia, North Carolina, Delaware, Rhode Island, and New Hampshire had three apiece, so they all tied for the smallest. Virginia came in second with seven. Out of those 56 signers, I put 58 signers on here because I can't write very well. <laughs> 48 of them were born here in North America, and the other eight were born in Great Britain. Most of them went over to Britain for their education, primarily in law, but then they came back over here to the States and said, get bent, we're going to help fight uh, this whole cause of, of independence. So education over there, liberation over here. The range of their birth years was 1706 to 1749, 43 years in total. The range of their death years was 1777 to 1832. First of these men to die after signing was John Morton of Pennsylvania in the year 1777, roughly a year after he signed the Declaration. The youngest was Thomas Lynch Jr. of South Carolina, who was only 30 when he died, whereas the oldest was Charles Carroll, who was 95 when he died. Now, right now you might be saying that the name Charles Carroll sounds familiar, and if you've seen the movie National Treasure, which came out in 2004, that would be why. He was that man in the prologue to the movie who wanted desperately to meet with Andrew Jackson while he was dying because he had to share a secret that would lead to the discovery of the eponymous national treasure. In real life, Carroll was a Catholic, and since he was effectively an English citizen, you know, because of the time of his birth, that put him at great odds with the English government. The religion of the state of England was the Anglican Church, an English version of the original Catholic faith, and the two faiths were at odds. Those who were Catholics and would not renounce their faith didn't enjoy the benefits of full citizenship under English rule. They couldn't even become lawyers if they wanted to. So it's very easy to see why Charles Carroll joined the cause of the revolution. In fact, not even his good name or his wealthy family could get him a pass in this regard. He couldn't even hold office due to his Catholicism. These men had a lot of interesting backgrounds, trades, skills, and professions, but the most common by a mile was lawyer. Many of the signers represented the states or colonies where they had been born. Massachusetts, New Hampshire, Maryland, Virginia, and South Carolina were all represented on the Declaration exclusively by men born in those colonies or states. And in South Carolina, 
all of those men, all four of those signatories, had the same profession, once again, lawyer. And out of the 13, North Carolina was the only one whose three signatories did not originally come from within the borders of the colony. Now with Pennsylvania having nine, it was still a pretty mixed bag of where they had originally come from. Only three of them had been born in the colony. Of the other six, four were born in England, Ireland, or Scotland. The other two came from Delaware and Massachusetts on the state side. The Massachusetts one being the most famous signatory of them all, Benjamin Franklin. A moment ago I mentioned my very popular Mayflower video, which has more or less made this channel, and I went through all 100 names of the passengers that originally sailed over from England. So I feel like if I reference that video, I kind of have to do the same thing with the declaration signers, right? So let's go through the names of all 56 of these men. New Hampshire. Their three signers were Matthew Thornton, William Whipple, and Josiah Bartlett. You might recognize that third name from the old TV show, The West Wing, which was probably not as good as you remember, but I digress. Massachusetts gives us John Hancock, who took up half of the signing space with his John Hancock. Then there were the Adams brothers, John and Samuel. And lastly, Robert Treat Payne, who probably wishes he had done something cool to be remembered like these other guys. Then we jaunt over to Connecticut, repped by Roger Sherman, Samuel Huntington, the creatively named William Williams, and Oliver Wolcott, which was a respected name in Connecticut in those days. Uh, New Jersey, which believe it or not was respectable at one point, had five signers. They were Richard Stockton, John Witherspoon, Francis Hopkinson, John Hart, and Abraham Clark. John Hart's age isn't known. I thought that was an interesting fact from the book. Some sources have him born in 1706, others as late as 1713. So he was between 67 and 74 when he died. Dude was a baller though, you should read up on him. Rhode Island was one of the colonies with only three signers. Their names were Elbridge Jerry or Gary, I'm not sure which uh, pronunciation was used. William Ellery and Stephen Hopkins but not the Stephen Hopkins from the Mayflower. Check the calendar here. This Stephen Hopkins was technically born in Providence, Rhode Island, but the lines have been redrawn since those days, and now his birthplace is at a place called, uh, I don't know how to say this, I think it's pronounced Situate, S-C-I-T-U-A-T-E. I probably butchered that, I'm from the West, cut me a break. New York gives us Francis Lewis from Wales, Lewis Morris from not Wales, Philip Livingston from Albany, which is now the capital, and William Floyd from Setauket, which is on Long Island. Uh, Setauket featured heavily in the AMC TV show Turn, which was about George Washington spying. It was a cool series for the most part, but it takes a lot of liberties with the actual history to the point where I, I kind of don't recommend it for that reason. Ready for the nine Pennsylvania bros. We've got the natives, Benjamin Rush, John Morton, and George Clymer. Then Benjamin Franklin, the Massachusetts man of a dozen hats, and George Ross, why did I Connery that? George Ross, our Delaware boy. The two Irishmen were James Smith and George Taylor, and our limey Englishman is Robert Morris. The Scotsman is James Wilson. Pennsylvania was quite the intersection compared to the other states. Delaware, another state with three signers, had George Reed and Thomas McKean, who were both lawyers, and then a farmer named Caesar Rodney. The first time I ever passed through Delaware was in 2013 when I was training to become a long-haul trucker, and it surprised me how much that tiny little state is actually made of wide open farmland. Now, Maryland would have followed South Carolina in the sense of uh, having all four of its signers be lawyers, except that one of them was the aforementioned Charles Carroll, so he was barred from practicing law at the time that he was a signatory to the Declaration. So the other three signers, who were all lawyers, uh, were Samuel Chase, Thomas Stone, and William Paca or Paca. Again, I'm not sure how that's said. Shockingly, the Virginia Seven were all either lawyers or farmers. Their names were George Wythe, Richard Henry Lee, possibly related to the famous uh, Lees of Virginia, which would go on to play a role in the Civil War, as they did in the Revolution, Benjamin Harrison, but not the president, Thomas Nelson Jr., but not the publisher, Francis Lightfoot Lee, 
Carter Braxton, and then some guy named Thomas Jefferson who had a lot of hobbies. North Carolina, being the one colony that had no local boys on the roster, sent William Hooper, Joseph Hughes, and John Penn to sign for them. You would have thought that John Penn could have been a Pennsylvania signer, but he had to go down to North Carolina, I guess. And rounding it all out at the end was Georgia, with such delightfully sounding names as Button Gwinnett, Lyman Hall, and George Walton. Button Gwinnett's trade is listed as Ironmonger, which sounds awesome. It means that he was a guy who traded in and sold iron. Uh, I wish we still gave names like that to different career choices, like, like hi, I'm Graham Bradley, I'm a wordmonger. It'd just be really cool. Now, interestingly enough, because my older brother and my nana have done a great deal of family history research for our lines, uh, I was able to plug in my genealogy to family search into relativefinder.org to learn that I personally am connected to 36 of these guys, ranging as close as second cousins, to, like Josiah Bartlett, to 14th cousins like Richard Stockton. Um, that's way more than the connections that I have listed to the uh, Mayflower passenger database, although four of them were uh, di direct great something something grandparents. The more that I dig into these big events in American history, the stronger my connection to all of it comes, you know, spiritually, ideologically. Um, I found out that I'm related to 19 of the signers of the Constitution, and George freaking Washington is my fourth cousin. Now, granted, there's a great deal of removal with all that stretched across time. Like, for example, William Shakespeare is my first cousin, 13 times removed. That means that if we were born at the same time, we would have just been first cousins, but those removals are a matter of generations. And, you know, once you get past, like, second or third cousins, it's pretty distant. Nevertheless, like, finding that there's any co connection to it at all really shrinks it for me uh, across time and makes me feel closer to these really important events that shape the world that we live in right now. Now, I could do a longer video about the nitty-gritty of all of their lives, but we are talking about 56 historical figures here, and it would be hard to know when to cut it all off. Like... Do I get into their finances, or what their legal statuses were upon death, or how many of them died in battle, or who had kids that had died in a battle somewhere? Um, which countries issued them their passports, or, or whatever, after Britain cut them off? How many of them were slave owners? How many of them were opposed to slavery? It would be hard to sum all that up in one single video, but I think it gives me a, a good hefty reading list to dig through in, in the years to come. I haven't even read biographies on all 45, 46 of the men who have held the office of president. And that's a lot. <laughs> so 56 signers of the Declaration who are definitely not as well known and therefore not as well studied and may not have their lives as well documented would be a bit of a taller order. But I'll give it a shot. But if I've learned anything from the accidental success of that Mayflower Passengers video that I did, it's that a lot of people have interesting information to share on these historical figures. And as I find out how much of my own family history is connected to them, it was also really endearing to find out how many of you in the comments section of that Mayflower video were technically distant living cousins of my own that had different tangential connections to these people 400 years ago, 200 years ago, even 100 years ago. And I hope that the comments section here will dig up some similar gems. So by all means, pitch in and share your own stories. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Once again, the book was Lives of the Signers of the Declaration of Independence, a reprinting of an 1848 original. This one here even looks like it had the original uh, typewriter text on it, and it's got some of the old black and white pictures of most of them. Not every single one of them has a picture attached to it, but my internet searching revealed that there were some portraits taken of the ones that weren't represented in the book. So maybe I'll do a nice little poster of that down the road. But for now, thank you for watching. And if you want to help me grow this channel and boost it and share more content like this, go ahead and click like and subscribe. And if you feel so inclined, please share this video with your friends and family. Until next time, drive safe and I'll see you out there.